Hi, welcome to part six of the um, the New Age religion and the Savior complex. And I was talking about how um, waking up can be a bit frightening um, if you're one of these people who have looked at the conspiracy movement, conspiracy theory movement, um, and seen things that aren't very pleasant to face. Um, they wake up from a fantasy that they've been living in into reality, harsh reality, uh, when they see this. And they do a bit of research to actually kind of back it up. Um, you know, if they can see through all of the, um, the lies and everything, and they think, well, um, I've been living in an illusion I thought was uh, life, but um, I've been lied to, and uh, so it, they take a bit of a knock, and I think a lot of people sink, find another escape route um, so that they can opt out of living in reality again and so they they fall for these cults and these these belief systems for example people that believe in cults whose leaders channel aliens let's say from the Pleiades or wherever these uh, you know the good guys of, of you know these blonde uh, Nordic aliens they they channel them and or well, their leaders do and they believe it they believe that these people are going to come to planet earth when the going gets tough and they're the clean up crew and they're going to deal with the psychopathic um, leaders within the governments and all of that um, yet they've never met one they've never shook hands with a Nordic Palladian alien in their lives They've never seen the spaceship. They've never been invited onto the mothership. Um, yet they believe. Um, it's the same when you look at it with Christians believing that there's going to be in a physical event. Jesus is physically going to, uh, you know, turn up again. Even though he's been was killed, he's going to physically turn up again um, and deal with all of the evil in the human race that's on and on the planet that's been committed by the human race is going to judge them all and um, beat the bad guys and everyone's going to be happy um, even though that they've never personally per, you know shook hands physically with this with this uh, amazing being they have faith in it um, people like to, to uh, escape in a belief system so that they can deal with the harshness of reality when in fact they're not dealing with it I think they are this is the problem as I was saying how in the last video how the world controllers use the, like to use the bible as a blueprint for future events and wars and, and, and famines and things like that um, they like to use, I believe, religions, especially mainstream religions, against one another to start wars, to start conflict. Um, in the end result, that they will have a world government where there will be no more of these big wars. They would end them. Um, H.G. Wells spoke about this in, in Things to Come. H.G. Wells was speaking about a new world order, a world government. Um, that will end all wars, and it should be left to the elite, the you know who are intelligent enough. He said the common man uh, is incapable of of doing that. Um, it needs to be left to world controllers, but they want a world government uh, where there are no separate superpowers kind of fighting uh, one another. So you've got to get rid of uh, separate countries. The idea of being uh, patriotic towards your country and all of that that has to go. You've got to have a world government, um, and that will be the um, the heaven on earth, it will be, there will be no more wars because of that. Um, 
there's even talk, I think it's Alan Watts said, the First World War, that was said, that was the saying, wasn't it? This is going to be the war to end all wars. That's what people were saying. They were saying it because they were parroting it, probably. Um, the idea, apparently, behind that is that after that war, people are never going to ever, ever going to want another war. Um, and when the um, their leaders say, well, we've got to unite Europe, we've got to unite the world, so that we don't have uh, uh, you know sovereign independent countries where people are patriotic because it starts wars. Um, you can see the conflict there. We've got to remove that. Uh, it didn't work, you see. This is very similar to the Bible blueprint, the New Testament of of um, a kingdom of heaven on earth where there will be no more wars where um, you know um, Jesus will wipe away your tears and all of that when when, the, when, when there's a final judgment like there's a final big one, there's a final big war you know, where it's going to be really really bad and afterwards it's just going to be peace for a thousand years or how, however I mean, that's what they promise with war isn't it, you know, there's a war but we'll have lots of years of peace afterwards um, you can see how it's painfully obvious how um, these power elite would use that as a tool if it works, you see. And it's, in, you know, it's made possible when people escape into a belief system um, because life's too painful for them. I mean, in a way you can't blame them. Hundreds of years ago, you know, most, I... Most people would be peasants living underneath these psychopathic people, and they would be the, your kings and your elite group of priests and all of that. And uh, you, your life would be um, wracked with pain. You, you know, would see premature death that would be around you, lots of death, um, uncertainty, starvation, poverty, insecurities. This would be daily life. Um, so, given that, uh, made possible by the uh, ruling kings for taxing you and making your life hell and intimidating you with their bully boys in the form of the knights with their armour, you know, um, armed to the teeth on a high horse and you're just a hungry four-foot peasant. Um, you would give it aided by the priests who you know forced this religion down your neck um, but also knew that your psychic defences were low because of the trauma inflicted on you on a daily basis you would naturally well most people is to try and say well this life is really bad but hopefully there's some kind of outcome here there's some kind of heaven in the afterlife, when this pain's over. And that's what people like to do when they have suffered from trauma, um, they feel life's too much for them. They put their faith in another reality from this one. Um, when in fact the only way, as I said, people can change this reality and make it um, you know, a, a heaven on earth, this inner change. Sorry I'm going all bib biblical here. <laughs> but I guess it's, you know, I'm making use of the Bible, I guess. Um, earlier on I said uh, Jesus uh, talked in uh, Proverbs. I, um, I was wrong, I meant parables, not Proverbs, parables. He talks in parables. And the definition of a parable here is um, in a dictionary, I looked it up. Um, a short allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach some religious principle or moral lesson or two, a statement or comment that conveys a meaning indirectly by the use of comparison, analogy or the like. An allegorical is symbolic and metaphorical. You understand? This is how he spoke. He wasn't being literal because he wanted those, you know, the character, whether real or not, wanted the people who could see, who could really, who had eyes to see. You know that saying, they, they um, look but they, they're blind, or they have ears but they, they, they're deaf. He was looking for the people that had eyes to see, that could really see. And that, that was the message there. A very strong message, I think. 
Um, where was I? Yeah, you may have heard all this before. Um, but it's very important, I think. Um, and, and there's something else. I mean, this this is this may shake up a, a lot of people. I'm going to say, I'm going to leave it in the next part of the video. It's going to maybe shake up a lot of Christians. And again, I don't mean to attack people. I don't mean to deliberately stir up um, hostility in people. But um, we'll talk about that in part seven. My battery's running low on my phone as well, so I've got to charge it. Uh, see you in part seven.